Hi Brother Thompson Bulldogs, good to see you again. Today I'd like to tell you the story of Peter and the Wolf. This is a piece of classical music written by Sergei Prokofiev, who was a Russian composer, and it tells a story. The music uses different instruments to represent different characters in the story. And so first I thought I could read you uh, the story written out with told with words. And um, I have this book here and I'll read that for you. Then after that, I'll give you um, a chance to listen to the different instruments and tell you what characters they represent. And then finally, I'll link below to the story that's told with music, and you can watch that video and listen along for yourself now that you know the story. So without further ado, feel free to sit back, get comfortable as I narrate the story of Peter and the Wolf. Peter and the Wolf by Vladimir Wagen from the symphony by Sergei Prokofiev. Once upon a time, a boy named Peter lived with his grandfather in a little cottage by a meadow and a forest. One morning, the morning of our story, Grandpa said to Peter, A big hungry wolf has been seen in the forest. You must remember to keep the garden gate shut, and don't play in the meadow. The wolf could come out and eat you. Peter listened to his grandfather and did as he was told, most of the time. But this morning, a little bird sat on the branch of a big tree out in the meadow, chirping happily. Peter stopped to listen. He thought, it's much too nice a day to worry about a wolf. So, the better to hear the bird's song, Peter opened the gate and went out into the meadow. A duck came waddling through the gate. Peter had left the garden gate open, you see. The duck waddled over to the lovely pond near the tree. The little bird and the duck were friends, but the bird felt the pond and the meadow belonged to her, and she flew over to pester the duck. What kind of a bird are you, the little bird chirped, when you don't even fly? And what kind of a bird are you, quacked the duck, when you can't even swim? And so they argued, the duck splashing and diving in the water, and the little bird fluttering and hopping along the edge of the pond. Suddenly, something caught Peter's eye. Was it the wolf? No, it was just the farmyard cat slowly crawling through the grass toward the pond. The cat thought, I'll just grab that little bird before he even notices I'm here. Closer and closer, closer and closer she crept. Peter saw what the cat was up to. Look out, little bird, he shouted. The bird flew up into the tree safely. The duck quacked angrily at the cat from the middle of the pond. Leave my friend alone, he cried. But the cat was not interested in the duck. She crawled around and around the tree and considered again how to catch the bird. If I climb up the tree, she thought, will he fly away? Just then, Grandpa came out. He saw Peter in the meadow and saw that he had left the gate open too, and he was angry. What would you do if the wolf came out? Grandpa scolded as he marched Peter home. But Peter did not listen. He was not the sort of boy to be afraid of a wolf. No sooner had Peter and Grandpa gone inside the gate and Grandpa gone into the cottage than the big gray wolf came out of the forest. He crept toward the pond, staying well hidden. Just then the cat scampered up the tree after the bird. Look out, quacked the duck to the bird. In his excitement, he jumped out of the pond and right in front of the wolf. The duck ran as fast as he could, but the wolf got closer and closer and closer until, with one gulp, he swallowed the duck whole. Then the wolf began to pace around and around the tree, greedily eyeing the cat. Meanwhile, the cat crept down the branch toward the little bird. Peter saw all that was going on from behind the closed gate. All at once, he knew just how to rescue his friends and catch the wolf, but he must be quick. Peter ran and found a strong rope. Then he climbed onto the high stone wall so that he was in reach of a branch of the tree to catch the wolf Peter would need the little bird's help. First, he climbed onto the tree and scared the cat away. But he whispered to the bird, Fly down around the wolf's head, but be careful, he doesn't catch you. 
the bird flew off the branch and fluttered all around the wolf's head, brushing his nose with her wings and making him very angry. Just when the wolf thought he had caught the bird, she would dash away. Peter inched out on the branch till he was right over the wolf. He made a lasso with the rope and lowered it down. Deftly, he looped the lasso around the wolf's tail, and with a mighty pull, he clinched the rope tight. Peter had caught the wolf! The wolf struggled hard to get away, but the more he jumped, the more the rope tightened around his tail. Peter tied the other end of the wolf to the tree and called down, I'm not afraid of some old wolf. Just then, a group of hunters came crashing and stomping out of the forest, pointing their guns all around and looking for the wolf. Don't shoot, Peter shouted at them. Look here, the bird and I have already caught the wolf. The wolf is very dangerous, called the hunters. Hand him over to us. No, said Peter. You mustn't hurt him. Help us take him to the zoo. What a procession they made. Peter led the way, of course. Then came the hunters, leading the wolf with the rope. Then came Grandpa and the cat. Grandpa could hardly contain his pride, though he had been angry earlier. He's a brave boy, my Peter, Grandpa said. Above them all flew the little bird, chirping merrily. Look what we have caught, Peter and I. And what about the duck? All the way to the zoo, he sat quacking inside the wolf, perfectly whole and well. He made such a noise that the wolf spat him out, and he returned with Peter to quack many another day. Okay, now that you know the story, before you listen and watch through the concert of Peter and the Wolf, it would be helpful to know what different instruments represent what characters in the story. Peter is represented by the string section, and his theme sounds like this. The character of the bird is played by the sound of the flute, and it sounds like this. The character of the duck is played by the oboe. The character of the cat is played by the clarinet. The grandfather is represented by the bassoon. It has a low sound. And the hunters and their guns are portrayed by the timpani drums. It sounds like this. Finally, the character of the wolf is played by the sound of the French horns. Okay, now that you know the story and the characters and their representation by the different sounds of the various instruments, you're ready to enjoy listening all the way through Peter and the Wolf. So again, in the comments below, go ahead and click on that and enjoy. I'll see you next time.